today's project, you will need the Anakin pillow pattern, which you can find in my Etsy shop. You'll need to print all of the directions out, including the applique templates that you can cut out. You'll need a selection of small fabrics that you would like to use for your applique foliage. Um, if you're doing the flower petal, you will need about a five by five inch square, which could come from a charm pack. Um, if you have just other scraps from your scrap bin, as you can see here, that is my favorite thing to use to make uh, the applique because you just need a few small pieces. So just select a range of colors. I'm going sort of with an autumnal theme here for my leaves. I'm only going to do the leaves templates as shown in my example just because I think that it has a little bit of a fall theme and that goes really nicely with the acorn uh, fabric that I'm going to use for some of my triangles. I've also chosen another fabric for my other side of my triangles. As you'll know, you'll need two contrasting prints when you read through the pattern. I've chosen a wood grain tone there and I have a lovely taupe, dark taupe uh, twill that will serve as my background. You need about a half yard of that. All of the exact measurements are included in the instructions. Obviously you'll need scissors and your sewing machine and you will need an, some kind of lightweight interfacing that you can use for the back to do your turned edge applique. If you have another method that you prefer to use to do your applique, you may certainly do that. I just find that something as thin as this cutaway embroidery stabilizer or another very light uh, fusible or non-fusible interfacing works just fine. You may also use a thin muslin scraps if you have that. It's really anything that's nice and like very thin and lightweight that can help you turn the edges of your applique without adding extra bulk that you would sew through them because we are gonna finish our little applique pieces by hand, so you don't want to add additional thickness to that. Okay, and then in addition to all of these supplies, obviously you need your sewing machine. You'll also want a mat and an acrylic ruler and a rotary blade if you have it. You may also use scissors because the templates are provided. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out all of my templates um, all of the leaf designs that I'm going to use, as well as the triangle design, and then we will get cutting. Okay, I've gone ahead and put you on fast forward this for this part uh, because we're just going to be doing all of the fabric cutting. Of course, that's included in the instructions, and I will also link all of the fabric requirements down below for you so you can um, get an idea of how much you'll need to get started. I just like to go ahead and cut all of the background. Um, for this pattern, I am using a solid because as you'll see, when we cut out the triangles, it really helps to have a solid so you can flip your little triangle template up and down and not have to worry about directionality. And you get more of your fabric that way with less waste. So I like to cut two layers at a time or more if you can, just to make the process go a lot faster. Once we have that done, we'll move on to the prints. Again, I've chosen non-directional prints for this. So the wood grain really doesn't matter if it goes up or down. You can't tell that when you're flipping it around. That way I get the most out of my pieces. This pattern also looks very stunning in a solid. So I highly recommend um, just going with all solids if you have that. Tossed prints are also great if you prefer to use prints. That way you don't have to worry about the directionality again. So once we get all of those pieces cut out, we'll be ready to start sewing. Now that we all have now that we have all of our pieces cut, we need to assemble the background. I've included this lovely uh, color planning page if you enjoy coloring and plotting and planning out what fabrics you might use and getting your color scheme down before you start. So that will come included with your um, pattern. And today I'm not going to do the flower. As I said, I'm just going to stick with some of the leaf shapes and show you how 
versatile the applique that are included in this can be that you can do many many different versions however you would like um, that suit your style but right now we're going to focus on creating the background with all of the triangles and the triangle strips that we've cut I would definitely say to maximize your fabric it works well if you use tossed prints that are non-directional or wood grains that can go either up and down and solids that is what I would recommend I would steer clear of directional fabric um, unless you want to do a very uh, patchworky design on this element that way you won't have little animals with their heads upside down or something else silly that might not make sense like that okay so it's just you want to keep in mind the directionality of your prints when we're working and that'll make more sense here as we assemble so we're going to basically follow this guide so you need a dark a background dark background dark background in the first line and then you will have a full strip that goes across here and then we will do light background light background light background and the full strip will come out through here okay so let's get started so I'm going to start with my dark background square up and it would be great if I had ironed, but that would require prepping and I didn't do that. Okay, and then we have our background square. Then we need another dark and a background square and another dark going up and another background triangle. Sorry, I don't know why I keep calling them square squares. They're clearly triangles. Oh, and on my strips, of course, I forgot to notch the end, but that's okay. We can take care of that right now. So I will go ahead and cut off the end. So if you forgot to do that too, you would just line your template up across the bottom. And then we're just going to cut off that one side there so it will line up with our angles. So I'm creating that angle so they can all nest together. And this is why it's important to use solids or something so that the directionality doesn't matter because now I have the opposite one for my bottom row. So now down here, we're going to do the light and then a background, then the light wood tone and a background. And then a light wood tone and a background. And you can start to see how it will come together. You just need to repeat this for the remaining rows. All of that instruction is included, of course, in your pattern. And then we're going to sew them together at the quarter inch mark. So you will fold them over, right sides together. And when you're doing that and you're lining up your triangles, you are going to leave a little quarter inch tail hanging over each end. So the little corner down here will stick out and then up here at the top you will have a little corner of the opposite one sticking out so you're lining that up there leaving that little bit of notched space hanging out the end that is your quarter inch seam allowance as you can see here I have all of my triangles laid out and I'm ready to start assembling them into rows so you're going to alternate the light and the dark so that they come together and form a triangle. And then the background triangle sort of disappears in between them and that's what creates that final effect. So let's get sewing. As you sew, you can pin if that makes you feel more comfortable. I like to chain piece as well. So that means I'm sewing all of the triangles together in pairs and then I will go back and sew them together in groups. Um, and then I will add my longer lengths that go to the right and the left. Again, all of that instruction of how to go about sewing is included in the pattern. So you will have all of that information in more detail. Um, and I'm just going to keep working. I'm showing you that how the staggered little tails create that nice inset point so that you won't sew them off at the end. I think I needed to correct something that I said at the beginning of the video. I think I mentioned that I was going to use a um, twill fabric. Absolutely don't do that. I was having a serious error in judgment at the moment. 
Um, and as soon as I started working, I realized my mistake. You do not want to use anything stretchy whenever you're working with triangles because they're gonna cut your grain line open and make it warp and stretch and you don't want that. So you may notice in the video that I began with the twill and even started sewing and then realized my error. So I switched to some Kona shiitake, which I think is a really close match to what I had originally hoped to use, but it's a nice uh, stiff cotton solid, really great hand if you've never worked with Kona before. This is shiitake, which is that really nice uh, grayish in between brown and gray color. Um, I think it goes really well with the other fabrics that I chose. And the benefit to using their solids is there's not really like a front and a back. So it really works out well when you're rotating your fabrics and flipping things around to assemble your uh, triangles and all those little angles there. So you do want to be mindful of that when you're working and probably pinning would be good too. Um, I sew a lot and I'm not really that I'm, you know, I don't really worry about that so much anymore, but, um, you may want to do that if you're really worried about getting those very crisp, everything to line up and taking your time with it. But anyway, I just wanted to pop in and say, if you're noticing a little bit of a change in the video, that's what it was. I realized that you absolutely do not want to go with anything and even remotely stretchy. So forget that I said that. Go with a con of the uh, cotton solid and you'll be really happy and you'll get those gorgeous uh, points that then we will not sew off at the end. So it'll be great. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, now I've sewn all of the rows together, all of the little triangles together, and it's time to assemble all of the rows into one large background unit. Um, I'm going to take them over and press all of my seams before I do that. That helps keep your corners and everything nice and crisp as you sew and eliminates a lot of tucking. So that's a top tip. It's make sure that you're stopping and pressing in between diff adding different layers of seams. That really keeps everything nice and crisp looking, which is the um, look that we're going for, as perfect as possible. I do recommend at this point um, being sure to pin when you're getting ready to sew your rows together and matching up those triangle points. That's what will keep everything nice and crisp when you're sewing. So you can just pull that back and look for the tips of your triangles there. And then you wanna make sure those are nice and lined up and you'll put a pin in it to hold in place as you sew. And then when you're sewing, so as not to bury your points or cut off the little tips, you wanna just make sure that the needle goes right across or slightly above where your seams for the triangle connect, right? So down here, anything below this little X in toward where we've pinned will be uh, burying the point. It'll be cutting it off. So you wanna keep your needle as you sew up here toward the top, obviously not too close. We wanna get our nice quarter inch seam, but coming right across that point there will make it nice and pointy at the end. This time too, I am going to make sure that I backstitch at the start and stop because now I'm starting to assemble my entire um, rows into an, a final unit, which I will then trim. I also added a little extra triangle. As you'll notice, I'm gonna update the pattern for you to include a little bit longer of a triangle to put off of this side. So you have a little bit more for trimming um, at the end so you can square everything up. Okay, let's get it assembled. Okay, now we've got it entirely assembled into a panel that is approximately 19 by, oh, it's a little bit bigger than 19, but we've got it. We are good to go. We'll work on creating the applique leaves in the next part, and then we will apply them and do some quilting to finish up our pillow top. 
Thank you so much for joining me for part one of the assembly of the Anakin pillow pattern. All of the directions and supplies can be found linked below, including the pattern, which is available in the Lurie de Fleur Etsy shop. If you enjoyed making this pillow with me today, please like and subscribe for more content. Again, part two coming up, which you can see a little preview of here, we will be making the applique leaves. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Happy sewing.